It was nothing short of an amazing and historic night for Sean White at the Winter Olympic Games last night. But as William Brangham explains, soon after White won his gold medal, many fans began learning of disturbing allegations about his past behavior off the snow. It was an epic final run. Sean White knew he had to go big to win a gold medal, and he did executing death-defying, back-to-back, near-perfect jumps in the half-pipe snowboard competition. These were tricks that White, the man who revolutionized this sport, said he'd never before landed in succession. The risk was worth the reward, securing White's place in history as the first American male to win gold at three Winter Olympic Games. It was also redemption for finishing in fourth place at the 2014 Games in Sochi. But the celebration was short-lived because at a news conference afterwards, a reporter asked White about a 2016 lawsuit alleging he committed sexual misconduct. The suit was filed by a former drummer in his rock band who claimed White repeatedly harassed and verbally abused her for years and then didn't pay her money she was owed. Among other allegations, she said White texted her sexually explicit and graphic images, forced her to watch sexually disturbing videos, made vulgar sexual remarks to her, and demanded she wear sexually revealing clothes. It also said White became increasingly hostile and threatening to her after losing in Sochi. White has admitted to sending the explicit images, but denied the other allegations. And at yesterday's news conference, he played down the charges. Um, you know, honestly, you're here to talk about the Olympics, not, you know, gossip. And I'm proud of who I am, and my friends love me and vouch for me, and, uh, and I, I, I think that uh, stands, stands on its own. That response incited a backlash on social media, prompting White to apologize this morning on NBC's Today Show. I'm truly sorry that I, I chose the word gossip. It was a, a poor choice of words to describe such a uh, sensitive subject in the world today. You know, every experience in my life, I feel like it's, it's taught me a lesson, and I definitely feel like I'm a much more changed person than I was when I was younger. And, um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of who I am today. And, and I'm White settled the lawsuit in May for an undisclosed amount. Earlier today, I spoke with Christine Brennan. She's a sports columnist for USA Today. She was at the Sean White press conference yesterday in South Korea. And I began by asking about her reaction to these accusations, which before now had not been widely reported. They're awful. I mean, it's, it's jarring. It's, they're lewd, they're, of course, harassing. Again, allegations, although he did admit to sending the text messages, the pictures um, that are very troubling. You know, I, I think for me, and the reason I wrote about this um, was, one, I did not know this, and I know that might sound strange. I, I really never have covered Sean White, and even though I've covered all these Olympic Games, I've never been around him. You could be the biggest Sean White fan on the planet, and still, I believe, think that it's important to find out what, what this is all about. Christine, I get it that there are enormous commercial interests that want Sean White to remain solely a heroic athlete. But given this Me Too moment that the country is having, how is it that this lawsuit got no attention before this point? I don't know. Um, certainly in sports, we know that there is adulation. And we know there are fans. So are, are people too interested in protecting the reputation of an athlete? Uh, do we maybe not want to know? I think that's something that happens you know, in steroids and sports, performance-enhancing drugs. Yeah, when you go to a baseball game, do you really want to know all that stuff or just want to enjoy the game with your family for a few hours? And I think that's what sports is dealing with. I'm going to try to talk to some of the sponsors. I'm sure others will as well. And you know, this is the last thing they wanted, is to have this conversation. But again, Sean White in the press conference could have dealt with it in a much more mature manner and, and, and spent time answering uh, the questions as opposed to being shielded and guarded from them. So I think it was a missed opportunity for Sean White in terms of getting the story out there and telling the story. It's striking in the sense that yesterday, Sean White is facing these questions publicly on the day that was really the pinnacle of an amazing, successful career. I marvel at Sean White and what he's been able to do and the longevity in a sport where one mistake and you're, you're done. It can be you know, so harrowing and, and the accidents can be awful when, when something goes wrong. Um, you know, he's really a pioneer. I mean, he, he brought that whole X Games uh, kind of new age uh, look to the Olympic Games. Uh, when you think about the disappointment he had in Sochi and to come back four years later and uh, to win that gold medal, that is majestic. I mean, that's what the Olympic Games are really about.
you can marvel at Sean White and be thrilled at what you saw and also be intrigued and interested and wondering about, about him and about the Me Too movement. I think you can have those two pot potentially conflicting thoughts. And, um, and I think uh, that's where we are in our society. So how do we reconcile these conflicting thoughts? People whose accomplishments are so striking, yet they also stand accused of doing awful things. How do we reconcile that? You know, it can be troubling, and it's tough to watch your heroes fall from grace. We've certainly seen a lot of that over the years, whether it's uh, Lance Armstrong or Marion Jones. Uh, Barry Bonds, I guess, was kind of in a con perpetual free fall in terms of the allegations of steroid use. As a journalist, I say we cover it. It's news. And I can still love the Olympic Games. I, You know, that moment when they bring in the Olympic flag and the Olympic hand plays, I just think, you know, wow, what would 14-year-old me have thought of this being here at my 18th Olympics? But I can also pursue these stories. And whether it's Mike Pence and Adam Rapon last week or this story this week, um, I'm a journalist. And this is news. And I'm here to cover it. And I do believe sports takes us to important national conversations. So here we are again. Uh, as I said, I think uh, it's a very important conversation to have. And Sean White is a part of it. And now we're talking about him. And I think that, to me, is is the end result. To have the conversation, others will decide where where the story lands and where the chips fall. All right, Christine Brennan, as always, thank you. William, thank you very much.